Hello, beautiful souls. I am going to give you the fifth ray of intellectual knowledge with Archangel Raphael today. Archangel Raphael is super special to me. Um, he is the twin of my mom, Raphael. So he's been with me a long time. I did not know that until uh, the last year or so. And he initially interacted with me um, as an adjunct to my healing. So uh, he came forward and gave us some healing elixirs and some um, advice on healing and things like that. He's been with me uh, for a very long time. And I'm super grateful for that. So let's get into this. Archangel Raphael, patron saint of travelers, the blind, those with body illnesses, nurses, physicians, medical workers. Yep. He's been with me my entire career. I realized that um, some months back. One of the seven angels who present the prayers to the saints. Archangel Raphael was called the angel of the spirits of men and is tasked with healing the earth. And that has been defiled by evil. So his color is green and he usually has a green and golden light about him. And we have been, my crew have been, my soul family, we've been working on healing Huna Matea for some months now. We are a little over a year that we've been maintaining the, the clearings and cleansings that we've done and the missions that we've done to help heal Huna Matea and Archangel Raphael is always there with us to do that. He is associated with healing all sorts of issues, illnesses, blindness, nightmares, and he has a special connection to all healers, formerly listed as nurses, physicians, and pharmacists. But I know from my own experience, he enjoys connecting with all benevolent healers. So part of what our connection was in the beginning was he was helping me to reconcile my many years of working in the healthcare system with the reality of that and look forward to quantum healing and understanding that I would not be causing any harm in the role that Mother Sophia has imbued me with. And so it took me a little while to understand that. It took me a, a while to do the shadow work, to let go of um, the mind manipulation that I had been subjected to for quite some time and understand that benevolent quantum healing is beautiful. No harm. Signs Archangel Raphael's presence is with you. Flashes of emerald green light. Finding messages that resonate with you on everyday objects. Seeing the name Raphael. Sensations are tingling or heat. Like right now, my face is very hot. <laughs> He's so happy that I'm covering his, his, um, his ray. Hearing music or sounds. Hearing whispers, which is benevolent loving. Seeing Raphael in form, which does happen, but it's rare. Feeling drawn to reconnect to earth. Archangel Raphael is one of my archangels. He is my soul mother's twin. Early in my quantum healing learning, Archangel Raphael used his green elixir of healing. It is, I, it's hard to explain, but you basically... If you have an ailment or you have a pain in your physical form, you will imagine that you're drinking a green elixir and you go through the motions of drinking a drink and you can do it by actually drinking a glass of water and using it as an actual, but you're, you know, saying this is my Archangel Raphael's green elixir and you drink it with the intention of the elixir finding the areas that are causing you disease or issue or pain and asking for Archangel Raphael to heal those areas. And it actually works really well. So um, he gave us that. Then it's imbued with his healing power 
And so you will just feel better. Like your only, your role in doing that is number one, having faith that this green elixir of Archangel Raphael will help you. And also allowing, inviting him and his energy and his abilities into your being to help you. Archangel Raphael's elixir can help decrease pain and inflammation. That's what I have used it for in the bulk of the time. I, I've been blessed to be very healthy now. And um, when I overexert myself or something like that, I, I will use it to help with aching muscles and sore back. Archangel Raphael is with me in all dimensions. If you're a healer, I especially encourage you to reconnect with Archangel Raphael. The fifth ray of intellectual knowledge has come to you as a spiritual gift. You are being given the ability to find information you need, understanding systems that impact your life, and find clarity in any issues that seemed unclear or overwhelming. So you see how that was able to help me with reconciling my work in the healthcare system. Um, because... At the, at the time, I was really feeling like I had been used as a weapon against my brothers and sisters. And I needed to heal that part of me and understand that I actually was there. You know, not only was it soul contracted, but in a benevolent way. And that I, while I carried out physician's orders and gave medications, which ultimately those medications cause harm, it wasn't my intent to cause harm. I thought I was helping. And so... Um, it helped it not be such a big weight to carry. You shall sort through truth from lies and learn that what you need to know and what you think you know are two different things. Archangel Raphael now assists you in integrating the blessings of the fifth ray. You are distilling a new truth. It might be the truth of discernment where you realize the appearance of a person, group, or cause is misleading, different, and not what you really thought in reality. I think that's very timely, don't you? This is where you get kicks in your body cues. You no longer feel that warm and fuzzy feeling. So this could be something you've done for a very long time. This could be something that is like really habitual in your day-to-day -day life. And as your frequency rises, you get more in tuned to whether this is for me or not for me. In doing that, you have the free will choice to make better choices, to make better options of what you're going to do with your life. So if this is something that you're feeling less and less connected to, change it. That's what you're being guided to do is change it. <clears throat> this is when the false light profits start to drop their benevolent acts and you have to use your discernment to pick up on their malevolence honor this if you've been habitually this happens to us all the time and unfortunately um it's just been a very predominant occurrence where a light being is good they are of a light they have a soul their alignment to source creator the whole thing and they start down the path and they encounter some nefarious beings. And these nefarious beings start to um, get in their head. And they're also sending them psychic attacks. And so they're weakening them. And whatever the case may be, it's a culmination of all sorts of different things. But these light beings end up becoming in flux. They start questioning things. And it's the mind manipulation starting to take over their power and next thing you know they no longer have a soul or they do but it's dark and we have to disconnect from those beings because they're no longer serving us right we may have liked them at one point in time but now we can't connect with them because they're dark and this has been talked about before where you know you may engage with a new audience or a new um a YouTube channel or a new TV series or something like that. Maybe it's a new group in your neighborhood. And initially it feels great. Like it, there's this love bombing thing happening. And then when the, the facade starts to fade away because nefarious beings, they can't really keep the love going very long because it's not 
authentic. Um, you start to feel that honor that honor that do not think that you're crazy. Number one, and honor your body cues, no matter if it's a person, place, group thing, honor it, go the other direction. Discernment is incredibly important as the spiritual path, all the more so you can open up to work with energies. When we're just using our discernment, first of all, the, the whole world that we've grown up in has guided us away from discernment. Like, oh, you're just nerves. That's just your nerves. That's just it. You know, get over it. Suck it up in buttercup. Let's, let's go. There's all these things that the world wants us to, they bully us into doing because they want us to do what they want us to do. If your body is telling you this is not for you, it should be, um, it should be honored and you should act upon that appropriately. That's using your discernment. I tend to know within a few seconds if something is for me or not. And it could be something that everybody else thinks is great and it can be great. It can be good, but also not for me. That's a thing. So you just have to be tuned in, recognize it, and then dig into the, the nuances of that. When you work with teachers or their teachings and that sort of things, the issues that can come about regarding spiritual principles is something you really should use your discernment about. I know that I cover a lot of this and it's, for me, it's been a transformation of what felt completely hypocritical and detached from spirit to what feels really aligned, really in focus, completely benevolent from the heart space and attached, definitely aligned to source creator. So to spirit. And that's the trajectory that I've gone. And it's been all over the map. It took me a long time to realize it wasn't going to be found in anything under the label religion. It's spirituality and it's individual and it's okay we have permission to have a relationship with source creator and our spirit team and the archangels on the, in the way that we find most beneficial to us. It doesn't have to be approved by any other being. This is why QET is vitally important. If I weren't the one doing it, let's say it was just someone that I had gone to and it helped me as much as it did, which that's the truth. My QET session was done by the being that I encountered a couple years ago and he was imbued with the gifts from Mother Sophia. So I do have that gratefulness for the clearing so that I could then access my discernment and receive undistorted messages and guidance and have the ability to make my free will choices on good intel right? So if you're being fed a lot of bad information, how are you supposed to make a good decision? It's very hard to do. And that is exactly what's gotten us collectively us where we have been is they make it so hard to get to the truth. Well, it's not that hard whenever you really start to enforce your boundaries and dig into a, through with, with a clear vessel what is for me and what is not for me it becomes very easy to do actually so once all those negative energetic distortions are removed and you can vastly decrease the amount of manipulation that's coming into your being and you're able to go within and connect with your spirit team and connect to your higher self. And then your discernment kicks in because you are flowing. The energy is flowing through you and you're not discounting it. You have belief in yourself. Like that is a whole process that you have to go through. This is also the process of decluttering your mind. When we declutter our mind, we can then hear our higher self. We understand that this message is for us for the greater good. Whenever you get to that piece, that's when you can start to define healthy boundaries. Before that, you don't really understand what's what feels correct for you because it's so distorted in your in your field, in your energy field. Once your energy field is clear and you're able to truly ask questions and get proper answers, clear answers, good guidance, totally benevolent from divine, 
that's whenever you can really start to grow and you're like, oh yeah, this, this, this resonates within me. Like, I don't know all the ins and outs about it, but I know this feels so much better than where I came from. And then it motivates you to not go back. Right. Discernment is not judgment. Discernment is not judgment, but it does allow you to make an informed decision based on frequency. This is my practice in life for sure. I decide to engage with any person, place, or thing by first discernment, discerning the soul status. Do they have one? Is it in alignment to source creator? And then I dig into, is this in the highest and best good for me? And if it is, is now the best, highest and good time for me. And so that's how I make decisions. That's why I don't make plans. More than 24 hours out, I'm not making plans. I'm going with the now moment. My now moment is about four hours. If it's, if it's beyond the four hour window, I don't know what I'm doing because things change rapidly. And yes, in a way, like if I had a bunch of people depending on me to do something at a certain time, I feel like I would have to um, commit to that. But I would still put that disclaimer up of like, you know, like if the energy shift and I get a big no, this is going to get put on pause. Just be aware. Because it's more important to me that I go with the flow than I try to force something that, that the universe is saying now is not the time. It was okay earlier. It's no longer okay. That happens all the time. You have to be able to go with the flow. When you choose to associate with people who are on a higher frequency, everyone benefits. I hear a little golf clap. If you choose to associate with people on a lower frequency than your own, you may feel like time is moving more slowly and things are becoming more difficult than it needs to be. And this is where you feel, um, uh, in my life, I used to always say, I feel like a salmon swimming upstream. And it's true. I was being given so many signs, both in form and around me that I was not on the path I was supposed to be on, you know, in in any given moment. And I just barreled right through them because my brain, my ego knew better not did not know better it took me a long time to learn that but that's why I'm so committed to making choices now in in the flow of energy these are beings that you may live with in the same space these are beings that sometimes you have to you know work with closely You need to be vigilant about blocking their energy from you, cut cords and burn the attachments in the violet flame with the archangels burning, taking care of the other end. Because when you cut a cord, it's one is attached to you and then the other is attached to the person, place or thing. Well, when you cut it, you cut on both ends. There needs to be a healing and a sealing done on both ends so it doesn't stay an open Um, access to either party involved discernment helps you navigate through illusions and find the real gems of life excuse me it helps you step back from those who say they want to support you but who actually just want to take and not give anything in return the fifth ray helps you choose wisely and sever unhealthy connections this ray also comes to you when there are more <clears throat> when there is more to something than meets the eye. Let me get some water. You will be given the power to discover and understand the truth. Wait until the truth clicks inside you. That's your gnosis. Until then, keep looking deeper until you unravel the mystery. The fifth ray will help you do so successfully. This is your body cues. These are your clairsentient abilities. This is your clairaudient abilities, claircognizant abilities. You need to receive those in to help guide you. That's what they're for. We don't, we were taught to ignore them. We were taught that that's not real, but it is. It is. It's something that we should have never been steered away from. We should have been steered toward. Life would be a whole lot better. 
We were always told to get over that feeling in your gut whenever you were encountering someone that gave you the creeps. But instead, we should have been listening because that person probably turned out to be not a good being. <clears throat> you want to tap into your intuition. Your gut is your intuition and your discernment so that you have the ability to make better choices. The challenge with the fifth ray is to remain open-minded as you find your clarity. Be willing to find more information if you need it, and the right answers will come. Be willing to change your viewpoint in order to perceive the truth of the matter. That is a huge deal. There are so many people I've encountered. They, they're they on a soapbox. They want, 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 want the answer to their question, Dis disclosure, truth, whatever. They ask me, and I give them to the best of my abilities, the truth as best as I know it. And they're like, Psh, that can't be it. <laughs> like, <sighs> that's when people become assholes. A-S-K-H-O-L-E. Don't ask me something if you have no intention of hearing and receiving. I could save that energy. So first, what you have to do is shadow work to get to the space where your ego is tamed and it won't just automatically pull you away from something that's not doctrine, that's not dogma, and allow you to sit with it. You may not fully agree with what it is that you're trying to process, but at least give yourself the opportunity to, to dig into it. What little facets of this does relate to you? Because by and large, these truths come to us because there's a piece of it for us. Be willing to accept new information to allow for the soul expansion and growth. Absolutely. 100%. If a system is working for you, that's great. I'm happy. It doesn't necessarily need to be changed. But don't be afraid to go into the chaos of creativity, which is Definitely tapping into the divine feminine traits, attributes, assets, and try different ways until you discover what truly works for you. So you may have been doing something for a very, very long time and the actual outcome, it serves you, but the process of doing it doesn't serve you. Don't be afraid to reinvent the wheel, right? There's more than one way to do things that are also benevolent. If, if the fifth ray has a special connection to the world of science, therefore you are encouraged to be an observer in your life, to experiment with what does and does not work for you. And don't let others criticize you when you go down this path. They could be the, the beings that taught you how to do it the way that you now find cumbersome. And you're thinking, I, I believe there's a better way to do this. Let me work smarter, not harder. And let's just see. I mean, what do you have to lose? It, if all else fails, you go back to doing it the way that you were doing it before. Cumbersome, but gives you the right results or the same results. If you are initiating, I'm sorry, I can't remember writing. <laughs> if you are limited and you don't want to pursue any form of science that is of interest to you, whether it's learning nutritional science, quantum physical science, chemical composition, and healing effects of essential oils. Do your research, meditate on it, ask for clarity. So you may not be science-minded. You may not be into all that. That may just, the whole idea of it may be something that you're put off by. That's okay. Just go and do it in little bits and pieces that feel all right to you until you discern that it is for you. And if you don't, just push it aside for a minute. That's okay too. If these are not of interest to you, it could be simply that the application of the scientific mindset in your life is overwhelming. In that case, become methodical in areas that can benefit you from the systems, habits, and structures that replicate desired results. And only take what serves you. It's like whenever I do an oracle cord reading, the entire reading is probably not for you, but there are definitely pieces in there that are for you. Now, they're incredibly accurate, I must say, because I tap into the energy signature of the being. It doesn't come from their mind. 
And so it bypasses the whole ego part of it. And people are like, I never verbalize that to anybody. I don't know how you got that. Well, I got that from your energy signature. It's telling me what's going on with you without the filters. Applying this approach to your exercise regime, your meditation practice, and any other aspects of your lifestyle that maximizes your potential and supports your best possible life path is the goal. This is the demonstration of walking by faith. <clears throat> using discernment and following your guidance. We don't have guarantees on the outcome of practicing our faith. That is the actual practice of faith where we have faith and trust in the universe that the universe knows exactly what's in our highest and best good. And when we align to that frequency, it, presents itself easier said than done if you're ready to receive the fifth ray of intellectual knowledge you can say i accept while i read the invocation use your soul name or your earthly name if you have a soul name i mean you have one but if you know your soul name i recommend using that but if you don't use your earthly name i andalusia queen of royal orders and spiritual gifts of my own free will Accept the blessing and grace of the fifth ray of intellectual knowledge. I call upon the grace and assistance of the universe and Archangel Raphael to help me discern truth and find the information and understanding that will enable me to feel peace and experience penetrating insights into my life. I am thankful for the gifts of intelligence and understanding that help me live my best life in service to love. May knowledge serve to the liberation of all beings through unconditional love and divine mercy through my own free will. So be it. I love Archangel Raphael's energy. He's very loving, nurturing, but decisive at the same time. And I've never approached him for any question or conversation or ask for guidance where I didn't first feel love, you know, I first feel love and like, it's just okay. Like everything's okay. Like I can speak my questions. I can, I can, um, you know, have the ideas that I'm pondering that I really don't know which direction to go in and it's okay. There's guidance there. There's clarity that comes. So I absolutely, especially today in today's world, All of my fellow healthcare workers, I really do empathically feel for you. I understand that life better than most. And I do feel like while there's an aspect of that workforce that this will not pertain to, there's a huge aspect of that workforce that knows in the depths of their soul, things don't add up. And so I definitely welcome you to get clear and to use your gifts for the greater good and become a healer in a way that actually resonates within your being so that you can start to piece back the, the lost and torn pieces of your soul from that healthcare system. Cause it is a real thing. I send you blessings today. VioletLotusEnergy.com. If you want to schedule your QET session and look into all of our services, and I will see you again next time for the sixth ray.